globalization is a global phenomenon which is currently sweeping through developing nations like wide fire on inside business Africa for today we look at urbanization and see this challenge the role of professionals in our special report with the current energy challenges in Nigeria what is the role of alternative energy we speak with Mr. Bumio Komolode chief executive officer of drone energy groups on these and more plus chief Mrs. Remy Aduku Bakari is 60 and a friend and where we shall celebrate this important occasion and the milestone with her at Abuja and Inside Business was also there. We have a report. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello, a very good day to you and thanks for joining us. My name is Kenneth Odushola Stevenson and this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Labikumi, I've heard on the highlight, urbanization is a very important phenomenon indeed and is sweeping across developing nations including Nigeria. And on Inside Business today, we will be taking a look at this important um, event that is currently going on globally and come back to Nigeria to take a look at what Nigeria is doing and the role of the professionals. And this we come right after this commercial break. Stay with Inside Business. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's still Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Thanks for staying with us. Indeed, we have a very important special report today with the title Urbanization and Cities Challenge and the Role of Professionals. And indeed, over the, all over the world today, the urbanization is sweeping through nations and uh, especially the United Nations is worried about the development, especially in relation to security, social amenity provisions and many more issues. On today's edition of Inside Business, we present Urbanization and Cities Challenge and the role of professionals as our special. Urbanization is a global phenomenon which is currently sweeping through developing countries like a white fire. As a result of the magnitude and the speed of urbanization in these countries, many governments appear overwhelmed and unable to cope with its challenges. Consequently, basic infrastructure and services are rarely provided as urban growth proceed haphazardly with a severe threat to the well-being of the people and society. Lagos, Nigeria is one of the largest urban areas in the developing world which is currently grappling with the challenges of urbanization especially in the areas of housing provision and other social amenities. The priority of the various governments. You know, a, a plan is not it's not, a, it's not a visible thing you can see. It's like preparing a feasibility report for the second Niger Bridge. You, you, when, the go, when the president goes here and says, we want to construct a Niger Bridge within the next uh, 12 months, it will not possible because they have not finished the feasibility report and engineering details. And you cannot start, start a bridge before, without that. So, you, you, so when you take it from that name, people will not see the impact of that. They will, they will see part of traffic and all this. And all this. As a town planner, you have a lot to do right from inception. Before a city can grow anyhow, if it does not properly handled, your road network, your housing arrangement, even the communication routes, all these things are packed together to make a city. And if they are not properly arranged and planned for, there could be problem. Because the town planner should actually be the custodian of what is happening in the built environment. Uh, he doesn't do this alone because he's supposed to be he's supposed to be overlooking a series of activities which involves urban planning which involves urban design which involves urban sociology which involves urban economy which involves architecture, which involves construction, which involves engineering, and so on. So, his role, really... What is a smart city? A 
smart cities is a city that is on the basis of technology, uh, recent technological inventions. You see, the, the white man will always invent names. Mm -hmm. for things. Give it a name so that it will become novel, it will become something demystified. Sustainable cities, green cities, smart cities. It's a mystification. What is that about a smart city? You make sure that the street lights, there are street, uh, there are street lights. You make sure that the, the, the lights are controlling the traffic. You make sure that the security, there are technological recent inventions that are, you are using to run the city. That's all. Urban centers have existed and have been evolving for many centuries across the world. However, the accelerated growth of urbanization is a relatively recent phenomenon. The enormous size of urban population and more significantly, the rapidity with which urban areas have been and are growing in many developing countries have severe socio-economic and physical repercussions. What then is the role of professionals, especially urban planners, in this scheme of things? You know, so there's a lot of work to be done. Because we visit even Kajajiari that we are calling Jiari. There's no road, no drainage. Visit that when there's serious rainfall. No adequate road, no drainage, no drainage, no water, hmm? no landscape area, no recreational area. No, nothing. Whereas, if you visit such area in other countries, you, you enter the place, you know that you are entering an AGRA area. As I said earlier on, some of the, we, we have uh, the problem of other professional bodies that have been in existence before people started knowing planning. As I've told you, I'm a consultant and I've worked for private individual in time of preparation of layout and master plans. Uh, on the part of government, we've been able to prepare urban renewal scheme, a redevelopment scheme like Osaka and Lekki. We've developed industrial city. If you go through Lekki Express Road, you see Elegance City, Housing Estate, and all the rest. At national level, I am part of the consultant that prepare strategic regional plan for Southwest. As I've told you, I'm a consultant and I've worked for private individual in time of preparation of layout and master plans. Uh, on the part of government, we've been able to prepare urban renewal scheme, a redevelopment scheme like Osaka and Lekki. We've developed industrial city if you go through Lekki Express Road, you see Elegance City, Housing Estate, and all the rest. At national level, I am part of the consultant that prepare strategic regional plan for Southwest. So when anything is to be done in that neighborhood, contrary to what is already in the plan, then you are able to rise up and say, I'm sorry, I disagree. That is what is called public participation in planning, stakeholder engagement. Uh, when I was in government, we used to do that a lot. We used to go from local government area to local government area, trying to sensitize the, the people. Because, like I always tell people, it's my joy that everybody knows about planning. Because once that happens, then it means somebody cannot develop the wrong thing beside you. Some of the projects we've been able to, you know, these are ST firm, we are growing. One of the projects we've been able to handle in the past is for those that want to do a mass housing. That's, that's one of my clients which I don't want to mention now. Uh, there's some of the projects we have around the, around the Aja as a site. It's about uh, five hectares of land. 
we go the land, we clear it, we look at the sun. Africa has increasingly become an urban continent with an average annual growth rate of 3.3% of urban dwellers between 1990 and 2000, the highest in the world. This expansion of Africa's urban population has persisted at a rate that greatly exceeds the rate of creation of possibilities for gainful employment for job seekers and other auxiliary services. In Nigeria, the issue of urbanization and government policies and advocacy have all been questioned, hence the need for the essentially bring the issue forward, especially with the new government of President Muhammad Buhari. However, the margin of the housing ministry with works and power and is silent on the issue of the heat to urban development may well be explained to practitioners and industry players. Uh, the other is when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You, you can remember in the years past, during the, during the colonial period to the First Republic, we to have national physical, national plans that 10, 10 years plan, 10, 15 years plans. Later on, when the military up to now, they started developing it one more year plan. Later on, it becomes no plan at all. And that's why we are not moving ahead. Well, the, the basic job of the planner is the preparation of physical development plans. Can be a subject plan, like want to build a school, it's a subject plan. Can be a layout, want to build a scheme like Lekki, Lekki scheme, it's a scheme. Can be a, a town, can be a city like Lagos. It can be a region like Southwest. It can be a nation at national level. So that the physical level of physical development plans. But People notice physical planning and planning more so in urban areas. On a personal note, if you have able hand that is handling what, then you won't entertain any fear. But imagine the three key major areas of concern, especially in Nigeria context. As a town planner, you have a lot to do right from inception. Before a city can grow anyhow, if it does not properly handled, your road network, your housing arrangement, even the communication routes, all these things are packed together to make a city. What that position behoves on me is to have a wide look of service to the people generally and not just a particular profession. And so when we talk of professions, we must also be looking at who they are meant to serve, so which is the general public. But the, the question almost answers itself because the town planner should actually be the custodian of what is happening in the built environment. Uh, he doesn't do this alone, Maki, because he's supposed to be he's supposed to be overlooking a series of activities which involves urban planning, which involves urban design, which involves urban sociology, which involves urban economy, which involves architecture, which involves construction, which involves engineering, and so on. Lands housing before they added urban development. So that, no person, no, no problem. But power, I think the people who did it are the only people who can explain their logic. A smart city is just a city that is run on the basis of techno uh, recent technological inventions. You see, the, the white man will always invent names. I mm -hmm. for things. Give it a name so that it will become novel, it will become something demystified. Sustainable cities. Green cities, smart cities. It's a mystification. 
We want to start by the smart city. You make sure that the street lights, there are street, uh, there are street lights. You make sure that the, the, the lights are controlling the traffic. You make sure that the security, there are technological recent inventions that are, you are using to run the city. That's all. In all these, what are the contributions of practicing firms and the offerings in relation to urbanization and smart cities and the development in the urban centers in Nigeria? We are in planning, we are also involved in managing, ensuring the implementation of that project, a very beautiful estate. Again, we have also been involved in preparing some development plan for village existions along the Lekki Corridor. I think we have about four of such development plan we are working on right now. Aside from that, the company also gets involved in preparing what we refer to as environmental impact analysis report of big projects. Uh, there is coming up about a 94 hotel development within the Lekki scheme one. Pay for some job with the uh, Minister of Com Federal Minister of Communication which we hope we'll be able to gather. We will try our best also. We are registered as environmental uh, uh, agency with the, uh, the National Environmental Agency. We have authority to prepare environmental audit reports. Indeed, our special report on urbanization and cities challenge and the role of professionals will continue in the next edition of Inside Business Africa. We'll be able to speak with more professionals and that will bring to bear their experiences and challenges and also what they need to do to ensure Nigeria is on the right track in terms of urbanization challenges, provision of amenities and uh, security as well. We'll talk about that next week. And don't forget, I will also, also later on on the program, we'll bring you some clips from Africa Build, CED Magazine and Inside Business Africa where you are as a partner to this important event. We'll talk about that very briefly before the end of today's edition of the program. But right now we'll go on commercial break and when we come back we'll talk about alternative energy and what an organization is doing in Nigeria to bridge the gap. Stay with Inside Business. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Indeed, Mr. Bumi Akomolode is the Chief Executive Officer of Drone Energy Groups Limited and he's been speaking with Inside Business on its provision in the energy sector, especially with relation to alternative energy. Take a listen. The Solar House is part of the Brown Energy Group with interest in the West African energy market and committed to the generation and provision of renewable energy, says Mr. Bumia Komolodi, the Group Managing Director of the firm. Uh, the first company is called Brown Positioning and Survey, which is a marine geophysical survey company. Uh, we started with Brown Positioning and Survey. We position rigs and we do seabed surveys, we do any type of uh, underwater, all types of underwater survey. Uh, that's our beginning. And then we uh, had to incorporate Brune Geo Solutions Limited, uh, which was to handle geotechnical survey, marine geotechnical surveys. Uh, that's the second company. And then when we started buying our own ships and vessels, we had to incorporate CLNO, which is Coastal Line and Ocean Limited, uh, which is a marine uh, company, and we also do logistics, you know, logistical support for our marine activities, training for maritime personnel, for surveyors, hydrographers, geophysicists, underwater engineers. And then uh, we've got um, solar house dash solar house which is into power generation from renewable energy 
from solar, from wind turbines, all forms of renewable energy. Confirming the versatility, reliability of the Brown Energy offerings, Mr. Komolodi stated the obvious in terms of the attraction to the business and vision at inception. And I worked for a company for almost 10 years, a British company. And naturally, I wanted to set up a company to train and mentor Nigerian geophysicists. And also, we used to import vessels, geotechnical, geophysical survey vessels into the country. And we found out that we were spending a lot of money. We were losing uh, a lot of opportunities because of the time between um, mobilizing a vessel from, for instance, Europe uh, till the, I mean, it, I mean the time that normally would elapse between when the vessel departs the port in Europe and the time it gets to Nigeria is usually too long for us most times. So we had to start acquiring our own vessels and develop local capacity. No doubt, Nigeria and indeed Africa are in dear need of energy solution as the continent battle with shortfall in energy provision. What then could be the challenges in assessing the alternative energy, including renewable energy? Mr. Komolidi speaks further on these and the firm's offering and the expectations. We started training geophysicists, surveyors, hydrographers, underwater engineers. We started training different people, um, developing that local content. You know, so that's what prompted uh, the incorporation of the first of the companies. Yeah. Indeed, congratulations to the drone energy, Mr. Mr. Bumi Akomolode, for providing alternative energy to Nigeria, especially with the current energy challenges. And we hope that we'll be able to bring him on the program sometime again and also to be able to talk about some other offerings from his organization. Moving on now, again, let's talk about a very important personality, a politician, a businesswoman, and someone that has done so well for the Nigerian nation, Chief Mrs. Remy Aduku Bakari. She is 60 and recently she rolled out the drum at Abuja to celebrate this important milestone and inside business was there to also speak with her on what this particular achievement mean to her. Take a listen. It was indeed a graceful celebration for Chief Mrs. Remy Adiku Bakari, an astute politician, entrepreneur and businesswoman who marked her 60th birthday with a thanksgiving at St. James Aglican Church by ECOWA Secretariat at Sokoro Abuja on February 14, 2016. She was the sanusure of all eyes. Family members, children, friends and guests came around to wish her happy birthday and thank God with her. She looked repugnant in her traditional outfit and smiled all through the Thanksgiving service. Now 60 years old, Chief Mrs. Remy Aduku thanked the church for standing by her and for her friends she showed appreciation and gratitude. Thanksgiving over, the celebrant and her guest moved to the reception hall of the church auditorium where various activities were lined up. The early morning Thanksgiving gave way to a bright and more celebration. The church reception hall was filled. Guests from far and wide, old acquaintances, political associates, members of her immediate family, relations and children were there to share in her joy. 
Chief Mrs. Remy Adiku Bakari described by many as a virtuous woman. She single-handedly built her political career through the dint of hard work, trust and dedication to the cause of serving humanity. Her victory over challenges was demonstrated by the cluster of people around to wish her well. The soul-lifting song from the live band produced by the instruments electrified the auditorium. It was as if the heavens and materially came down. It was praise all the way. Chief Mrs. Remy Adiku Bakari thanked God, her friends, for standing by her in an exclusive interview. And finally, before we go on to this edition of the program, let me say something about the Africa Build, that event that actually took place in Lagos. And the Inside Business and our sister program also a publication, CED Magazine, that was actually partner to that particular event. Here are some of the sound bites and events that took place at that. And next week, I watch out for this program, especially a full report on Africa Build as it unfolded in Lagos and also what happened at that event. want to be a seed company, you want to be registered with the federal government. After registering with the federal government, you register with the National Agricultural Seed Council. And out of that passion, I said, no, something needs to be done. There should be an alternative. Drug is never an option. Well, time is really not on our side on this program. Every time we have to always want to cover as many sectors as possible because the program is Inside Business Africa. But next week, here are some of the things you'll be seeing, especially our special report on agriculture will return. And also other important...